Hello and welcome to the show. We start this week's Canyon Rally with a Mercedes, the E420. Uh, this is the, the first Mercedes that I think I have driven on this game. I did go and put the biggest engine in the car. It's a 5.5 litre V8 with a supercharger on it. So there is plenty of power available in this vehicle. No, it hasn't got you know, the formula car speed, the hill climb car speed and so on, but still pretty quick. It's up to 90 miles an hour before we crest that uh, turn one. And perhaps more impressively, the brakes were pretty damn nice. It gets slowed down well into that second corner, which is so very important. Although a little bit too eager on the throttle out of the pond hairpin got me in a lot of trouble. And by the time I realized we were quite going to end up pointing down, down the canyon side. I couldn't, I just couldn't stop it. I got on the brakes as quick as I could, but uh, yeah, <laughs> a bit too much speed. And well, there we go, tumbling. The wheel is absolutely flowing its way. You can just see it bouncing off into the distance. That's an impressive bounce going on. For, <laughs> to be fair, when, when you do lose a wheel on this game, they really, really do bounce their way around the, uh, the scenery. Yeah, a little bit of a little bit of a broken Mercedes as we uh, leave the tunnel hairpin this time. One thing to notice with this car is just at the exact wrong time I got a little bit of wheel spin. There's a bump that I don't, don't normally come across. It just caught me out. I wasn't expecting it to uh, just ever so slightly pull the car to the left and in pulling the car to the left scraped the rock and that well tore the wheel apart and then rolled the car over there is a, a decent amount of power you know this thing will spin its wheels up and it will go sideways uh, equally landing of the bridge jump isn't too bad in this vehicle but if you are across you know on the right hand side of the road there is a lot of bumps out there and if you're just that you know five ten centimeters the wrong side of those bumps your car gets caught on the dirt gets sort of pulled to the right and you can end up in a lot of trouble equally uh, understeer yeah, I thought I could carry the speed. The answer was, was no, no, it really, really couldn't. And I love that it didn't just go sort of nose first down <laughs> down the canyon. Again, I was on the brakes and couldn't stop it in time. But just as it went over the edge, it I guess it clipped a, a, a mound of something and it just tipped the car. So it had to roll its way spectacularly down the horse. Again, getting a little bit caught out by the understeer through the fast corners. That is a big impact into the trees. I tried to back the car out because I really wanted to show the damage off. Uh, the way I ended up sort of hitting the tree sideways, I kind of hit it with the driver's door first. And it's uh, yeah, quite an impressive amount of damage going on in the front of the car. Unfortunately, it is very, very beached. And I couldn't really pull it out of the, the bush to show it off properly. Uh, another word of advice, don't uh, scrape the wall on the left-hand side as you take off from the uh, the bridge jump. It just tipped the car a little bit in the air, so it landed very heavily on the front right-hand side, snapped the wheel apart. Uh, yeah, not not a not a particularly good landing there. However, actually all in all wasn't too bad of a car, you know, for a vehicle that's uh, not designed for off-roading. And while yes, this is an all tarmac course, there are a lot of big heavy bumps and big heavy landing zones for the suspension to deal with and this car didn't really have too many issues with them and that is all very nice also brakes pretty good on this again you know yeah, we're not traveling 120 miles an hour into these braking zones however a lot of cars have had big issues getting slowed down for sections and this just didn't this was a lot more controllable than a whole swathe of cars that have gone down this course again this is a horrible bumping bumpy braking zone We've had real issues on some cars getting them slowed down for that turn. No problems with the Mercedes. It never went into the wall at a turn two or into the concrete barrier at the uh, at that braking zone. And that is, that is a testament to the car. To, to be able to, to do that, all of those stuff consistently is a very, very good showing from the vehicle. Likewise, never really had a problem in this braking zone either. Again, another place that's very easy to uh, have issues. That They're all downhill uh, braking zones. Yeah, could have massive issues. Not a problem for the Mercedes as we can now uh, wind the car up and see how fast it gets on this downhill section. It is a pretty solid speed. It's 112 miles an hour. It's not quite 140 of the Formula 1 car, but 100. 12 is not bad going as we now come through the S's. Got to make sure not to get oversteer or understeer at the wrong moment through here. It is a nice clean change of direction, not clipping that nasty banking on the inside. A little bit too much sideways across the line. It's about 
102 miles an hour across the line and we find ourselves off in the scenery. Don't quite roll it though. There's a couple of times actually this car got a long way onto its side but it still came back down again. It's still perfectly functioning and most of the damage done to this was after crossing the finish line, I think it probably did take a little bit on the bridge jump as most uh, normal road cars probably will. It's a heavy landing down there. Yeah, car, <laughs> car still working, having crossed the finish line. Uh, a, a little bit of a surprise, actually. This thing did drive really, really quite nicely on its way down this course. A little bit sad looking by, <laughs> by the, the, the end of the trip through the other uh, scenery. Yeah, a bit too much oversteer across that uh, finish line. Couldn't quite keep it together. Up next, we have got the BTR 80, a amphibious armoured car. Yes, this thing actually will float. Not that it's going to have any need for that on this course. The gun moves, the window covers move. It's a really rather, really rather cool vehicle. And I do love taking these completely inappropriate vehicles and seeing how fast you can drive them. Now, I wasn't expecting this thing to be, you know, have massive performance. It's a giant, heavy, armoured, armoured vehicle. However, the acceleration is actually not that bad. But considering this is a steep hill, this is a very, very steep hill. And no, it's not earth shattering, but we are almost up to 50 miles an hour on the climb up here. And for such a large vehicle, that is not bad going. As we crest the hill, okay, we're not going to get air time. It is perfectly controlled. We're doing almost 70 before we jump on the brakes. And I was using about the same braking zone as the Mercedes. Yeah, okay, we we're probably, what, 20, 20 miles an hour down on the Mercedes. But there is a lot more mass in this to get slowed down. It still did. It still got slowed down for that turn two, which really surprised me, and it was a lot more agile. It was a lot more agile through these corners. Now, the the, the two, or the, the pair of, I say the pair, both both of the front axle steer, so we've got sort of four-wheel steering going on at the front. I'm trying to think of a way of saying that and it all making sense. You'll see what I mean as we come through these corners. That may well be helping in terms of getting this vehicle turned around these corners because there was not the sort of, sort of crippling understeer that you might expect. In fact, I <laughs> there was more, far more steering than I was expected around that corner as I turned in too soon. I think it's the first vehicle to clip the actual inside bank. We've, we've rolled a few cars off of the uh, sort of nasty, uh, sort of, I say serrated serrated edge along the pond uh, this actually it just turned in so much better than I expected and it wasn't the next run that I got the vehicle to the bottom this was yeah really quite nice it was really quite nice to drive it had no problem as you say as you might imagine from a vehicle like this, it had no real problem with the bumps it could attack the bumps pretty much flat out everywhere but the handling was actually really quite good. It was up to 70 miles an hour this time as we jump on the brakes into turn two. And it got stopped and then it will get turned and it will still be carrying really respectable speed. Yeah, it's not got the acceleration of the race cars and the rally cars and all of them that have gone down here. It's just not got the power and it's way, way too heavy. But it is still going at a pretty respectable speed, a bit 60 miles an hour as it leaves the uh, bridge jump. It actually, normally that landing there would be very awkward. It kind of lands halfway between the flat surface and the downhill slope. You really want to be landing on the downhill part because that's kind of going with the angle that your vehicle is at. This kind of lands halfway in the middle. Now you do that with a normal car and you bounce around and your vehicle's generally ruined. This gets away with it absolutely fine. We actually hit the uh, nasty serrated dirt on this run doesn't really affect the car enough though it kind of twists me ever so slightly but it twists me the way I'm going anyway so <laughs> doesn't really make a huge difference it's again up towards 70 miles an hour once more though we are on the brakes and get stopped for the tunnel hairpin and then I was very curious to see just how quick could we get the amphibious vehicle on its run down this hill it's not the steepest downhill section imaginable. However, we're up towards 80, 88 miles an hour, almost cracking the 90 miles an hour. Couldn't quite do it. But the most impressive thing is it continues to carry that speed through the S's. I mean, this is going almost as fast as the Mercedes through these S's. This is a giant amphibious car, and it is carrying the speed. It can't accelerate away out the other side, so it's only 73 miles an hour across the finish line. But that is incredible. That is not what I expected. That is incredible to be carrying that sort of speed through that section in in this. Yeah, it drives really nicely. It drives really nicely indeed. As you could imagine, you know, the bumps really do not hold any fear for uh, a vehicle like this. You could throw it about and it is absolutely fine with uh, wandering around out there. 
I have no doubt if you clip them wrong with the wheels turned, you can probably snap stuff if you're not careful. But on this course, it is not vicious enough to cause the armoured car problems. And finally, we have got a, a Burnside. This is a racing version of the vehicle. The only one of these that I have sent down before was the, the lead sled, which is kind of vastly inappropriate for this course. Way too low and, yeah, had plenty of... Uh, plenty of those kind of issues, so I was curious to see how a racing version of this car would fare. Now, of course, it is a rather old racing car, and uh, one thing that I didn't realise, it does only have a three-speed gearbox, which is a, a little bit of a problem. Uh, speaking of, you know, acceleration and so on, this was only... Uh, you know, what, 15 miles an hour faster than the than the amphibious car on the run up the hill? Uh, also very, very sideways around these around these corners. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a race car, but it is a very, very old race car. So again, we've not got the crazy, crazy levels of power that we have had in some other cars. We have got an awful lot of oversteer. Big twist on the takeoff. Surprised it got away without snapping a front wheel on that landing because it lands very, very heavily on the front left, but it does... It does make the landing stick as we come around the pond hairpin, can't get the vehicle turned, end up in the rock face. I think I might have bent something in the steering when I ran along there because it did not feel particularly cold. I think actually I might have broken a shock absorber just looking at the way the front's bouncing around. Yeah, a little bit too much understeer. I'm not quite sure what's going on with the bouncing, but uh, yeah, a little, little bit too much understeer through there run into the into the canyon side and you're going to end up breaking something again it's the uh, eagerness to get on the throttle that gets me into trouble running out of the tunnel hairpin that's a lot of damage on the front it's a very very sad looking burn side with the <laughs> all of that front damage now the car is actually still mechanically in working order However, we've bent the chassis up so much that the front wheels no longer are no longer even remotely close to touching the ground. Like the steering is actually still perfectly functioning. The engine is still running and the rear wheel's still spinning, but yeah, that is a very, very bent up chassis. Now, having had no issues with the Mercedes or the amphibious car under brakes, this one a little bit different. A brake's still very good on this, however. I did manage to lock them up, and locking up the rear brakes, not a good thing to be having in two. That at turn two. Again, very, very similar story to the Mercedes. Almost got myself in trouble jumping too far to the right. I recovered it this time. The Burnside didn't get suckered off uh, to the, uh, the right on the dirt. However, I, uh, again, locked the rear brakes, and that's not particularly helpful. Lost the back end and ended up soaring off into the scenery. The uh, bumps were also quite vicious on the burn side. Combine quite vicious bumps with a already quite oversteery car and we get a very, very low speed roll. Perhaps one of the lowest speed rolls we've had on this series. Yeah, it is, it is viciously bumpy down here. And when the burn side starts going, like, that is a huge, huge bounce for the car. Combine that with what is already quite an oversteery vehicle. And as I'm trying to put power, I'm, I'm trying to rescue the car at that moment when it suddenly had massively, massively sideways moment. And yeah, I just couldn't do anything about it. Got to be a little bit slower across those bumps. And again, as we come into this final, <laughs> this final section, having had understeer problems with the car in the opening runs, it was now a little bit too much in the way of oversteer. I kind of over overcorrect a bit not quite uh, not quite change direction well enough and spin the vehicle at uh, one of the faster parts on the course again this certainly wasn't the worst car though in terms of getting a clean run down the down the canyon yeah we're not going massively fast on this uh, run up towards the up towards the crest but then that does mean that we don't have a problem on the sort of on on the actual turn down into the second corner and it is a big big slide from the burn side you can see the way the car is bouncing around on the suspension uh, a rather classic race car while it is a racing vehicle you know isn't going to have the greatest of uh, of suspensions that towards the bridge jump for this time it does land a little bit heavily on the nose but it's not losing any of its momentum so not really any time lost as we get it slowed down again it gets bucked around massively on the bumps but it's a better a better line through that section and now as we try and get on the power you don't want to get on the power too soon uh, again the understeer will catch you out 
or it will be the oversteer who started spinning up the wheels. There is a very, very fine line with this car. A little bit like the Mercedes, to be honest. Both in a similar manner, quite a fine line uh, between massive, massive oversteer and uh, crippling understeer that's going to send you off of the course. But if you tread that line, it's quite an entertaining car, quite a good car to drive as we now start our run down the hill and this is where we do hit a little bit of the problem with the uh, the three gears it is buzzing in the limiter at about 93 miles an hour it's uh, yeah not that much faster than to be fair it probably wouldn't have gone too much faster uh, anyway it was, it was sort of buzzing in the limiter with only a little bit more straights to go as we are around the final corner it's 91 miles an hour across the line for the burn side you know, that kind of just puts into perspective the uh, the performance of the uh, the amphibious car. Also, the brakes were cooked. By the time we by the time we crossed that crossed that line, the brakes had had it completely. Um, if we as we come up towards this uh, finish line, I just wanted to show it again. If I jump on the brakes, you can see, yeah, they're they're very warm at the <laughs> at the front there. It got away. We have had a few cars cook their brakes before we get to the end of the course. This one was okay for the last of the big stops, but. Uh, yeah, now, <laughs> thankfully it picked the right moment to uh, overheat them. Anyway, on to the times. The Mercedes sets a pretty damn respectable time, actually. 140.8 will put it into 26th place. It uh, goes quicker than the um, Miramar race car. I, I, I never pronounced that one right. Sleeker GT4, the Dodge Daytona, the RG Sandstorm. It is only a little bit down on the Vanster, the Night Snake. It's uh, about a second, second down on the Night Snake Barstow. That is a very, very quick muscle car. That one. A little further down, we find the Burnside race car, a 147.6, puts into 37th place. It uh, beats the ETK 6000 series, the big uh, rally truck, the RG Vortex, the uh, Rock Bouncer, the Roma as well, losing outs to the Crown Vic. Cadillac DTS and the Rally Covert, but it's not that far down on the Rally Covert, and it is way, way quicker, about 10 seconds quicker than the lead sled version of the Burnside, so it's a, it's a good car, a good car to uh, drive, it's, you know, it's a classic a classic race car, it has its has its drawbacks, speaking of the uh, the lead sled, the uh, the BTR80 is in 50th place, a 201.4, I'd kind of hoped that it might have gotten that little bit quicker, just to embarrass some more vehicles, it still goes faster down this course though, than the Corolla, the Pigeon, the Bluebird bus, the RC car, the Rolly Covert, and so on. And that's not that far down on the likes of a drag racing Covert and that lead sled. I think that amphibious car has perhaps been one of the biggest surprises I've had in this in this series. That was really nice to drive down this course at a pretty respectable time. However, that is going to be it for this uh, this episode, guys. As ever, I'll put links to all of the mods I've used in the description so you can download them, have a go with them yourself. But that'll be it from me. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, uh, goodbye. <laughs>